I made him a little less handleable for you. <laughs> I might start by just stroking by his foot and letting him just kind of see that a little bit. And I'm not even really stroking him yet. And I'm going to go in this kind of slow motion. And you see, he's taking a little look at that, isn't he? Uh -huh. And so I give him a moment to, to kind of think about that. And I let him, I'm just going to stroke your arm. What a good boy. And remember, all the same things apply. The more calm you are, the more quiet, the more mindful you are, then, you know, it's possible that he can start to now feel that. What a good boy. And it's interesting because they should be able to adapt to some new things. I mean, actually, they kind of like new things. So I'm just going to stroke again. Can you see how he's thinking about that? Uh-huh. What a good boy. Yeah, he is. He's really thinking about that, and I want to go back away so it's not threatening. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to go much beyond just his foot right now. Oh, I one, and he's biting on that one, and then you come. Then you come over, over to the other side. Okay, but just slowly, really, really, really slowly. Feathers work better than paintbrushes with birds. Yeah. We use so paintbrush. T touch. What we can do is is just more mindfully and slower, really slow touches. And we start doing these little circular patterns. And there's something about this kind of more mindful, circular pattern that gets his attention. I'm going to hold you up. That's a good boy. Yes. Because what we want is, like you talk about him being kind of addicted to love, and what we would prefer really is for him to be able to be touched in a way that is a little bit more mindful and engaging to him, without him feeling like he has to keep pestering you for it. So these little circular patterns, And, you know, we would do the same thing. We would start coming up underneath his wing with slower strokes. This dog's barking. And again, maybe going in with the fingertip, but still making a little bit of a circular pattern. So I'm not necessarily, I don't know, petting or hugging on him. I'm giving him something to think about a little bit more. Ask for the for them social things. Yeah, it just it gives them social manners. So it's, yeah, because, you know, it, it, it's that same thing just like with our dogs. We work with so many hyper dogs. And people think it's great to just rough them up and have a good time. But, you know, the dog just gets more and more aroused and out of control. So even with a guy like this, then I can eventually put my whole hand on, and I'm still making these small little circular patterns. And, and you can tell he's really kind of listening to that, isn't it? It's different than maybe what he's experienced. Yes. That's pretty much what we do. Yeah, good. That's perfect. That's perfect. And that's just so our students kind of see the idea. Because, you know, we see the same thing. We see people that have these birds that just get more and more aroused and get louder and squawkier and crazier and, and people, it's like having a border collie. You know, you have to keep going. I mean, where's the limit? You know, instead of having some way to get them a little quieter. Maybe only five minutes. 
you know, really short little sessions and then go back away so they really have a break. Does the bird stay and, here or does it just come for a, bit a day outing? Well, it depends. I mean, we've worked in, we've gone to sanctuary areas where we've been able to work a little bit. And a lot of what we do is just teaching the handlers, you know, to, to take some of this approach. But the difference is that we, we really try to get very, very quiet and mindful which of course is going to, our emotional set is going to influence the bird, and that's the mistake that a lot of new bird owners make. They get drawn into the drama, if you will. Oh, oh very wow. bird. And so it's, you know, would you like somebody to come up here? And sure, you, anybody else want to work with him a little bit? I mean, it's, it's wonderful to have a bird like him to work with. Just so get hold your hand up in front of his chest. And one of the things mm -hmm. I just let people know with a lot of birds when they step up, they go to test the sturdiness oh, with their yeah. beak, and people think they're going to bite, they're so they pull they it don't. away. Right, and, yeah. and then the whole thing's a mess. So sometimes they will test. You don't want to pull your hand away. They're not going to bite. They're just... <laughs> the circular under the wing probably is a really good place, yeah. in, in my opinion, for them. Um, it's not a place that gets touched a lot. Most people only just very lightly take their whole hand and go over the top of the bird. They don't feel it like a dog would feel that. I think you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, it's it's nice to get them to stretch out a little. We had a group. We had a person bring a group of farmyard chickens to a training in Germany. Never been touched. <laughs> and you know, she just gathered them all up and stuck them in these crates and brought them. And of course, the, it was just squawk, 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 craziness. Thirty minutes later, these chickens were like. <laughs> you know, they were completely. Did you think they were in the cages? No, no, they were out. They were out. People were touching. They were completely <laughs> changed from 30 minutes. Birds are exactly the same. When they're born, yeah, when they're born, they're either going to demand leadership qualities and try to take over the roost, which means whatever human they live with. Wait a minute, I need a hand. And Romeo is obviously a follower. He is not a leader. Personal, what I would classify as a leader personality type bird. He'll, he will just adapt to your environment. He's so loving. They're just addicted to it. it, and again, the person that he had loved this bird. This was the center of his world since he was a kid. Yeah, a lot of people think that just because a bird goes to a sanctuary that you know, we take abused, we take um, unwanted, we take abandoned when people pass away. It's not always just because someone tortured a bird, although we do have them too.